Chapter 1. Mental Training Why is it necessary to train mentally? Remember, an athlete is 80% mental. Even if this isn't your first mud run, you're going to face obstacles that will seem impossible to do at the time. You may possibly even consider quitting. Psychologically, every time you quit or fail to succeed in a plan, you are more likely to quit again at anything. You've trained yourself to stop when the going gets tough. Maybe that plan is to stop smoking or drinking. Maybe it's to run to the top of the hill without stopping. Or it's losing weight. I use a trick that's helped me countless times. Whatever your goals or challenging moments in life are, practicing this one trick regularly will work toward all of them. I'll tell you what this simple mental training technique is in a minute. But first, you need to know the power behind it. If you practice this one technique frequently in everything that you do, your chances of success in all of your goals, fitness, work, relationships, etc., will greatly increase. Why? Because you will be in control of your environment. You cannot be beaten down because you won't give up. You will be able to go the distance regardless of what it is because quitting will be unfamiliar to you. Winning is something you will have grown accustomed to. Here's an example. I knew a gentleman years ago that had never eaten at McDonald's. It wasn't as if he disliked McDonald's. He just had never eaten there before and consequently one day decided to make it a vow for the mere triumph of not breaching his continuing record. A record that not too many people have ever attempted. He prided himself on the fact that there were very few people in America that have never eaten at those big golden arches. I'll bet there had to be multiple occasions where McDonald's was the only available restaurant nearby, or all of his buddies were eating there and he didn't want to be the oddball, or possibly his kids wanted a happy meal. But in order to keep his ongoing record, he had to eat elsewhere. But for the sake of his record, he did it because it was important to him and therefore made it his mission. Another example, a friend of mine has never had a cavity. She humorously admits that she takes extra precautions with her teeth because she's more concerned about keeping her cavity-free title than she is about keeping her teeth. I'm sure there were many late nights that all she wanted to do was just go straight to bed, but she took the extra time to floss and brush. Simple, right? Another example. I love donuts. When in the rare times we have donuts in the house, I will not eat one just to prove to myself that I am in control of my decisions and temptations are not in control of me. One more example. A college track coach of mine told me that he had run five miles every single day for the last five years. That was a record to be proud of. Just so he didn't break his streak, he ran. When he was sick, his wife had a baby, family was in town for a holiday, etc. He ran. So what is this huge successful tip that can change your life in so many ways? Have you figured it out yet? Do what you say you're going to do. That's it. Get into the habit of always doing exactly what you tell yourself you will do regardless of how you feel. Tired, stressed, depressed, etc. Test yourself frequently throughout the day on small and large tasks. Be sure to do what you challenge yourself to do. Then you win. These are your own personal goals that you promised to yourself. Every day can be a new personal record of how many days in a row you come out on top. The goal is to accumulate as many wins as possible. Get used to winning and you get used to doing what you need, want to do, regardless of what life throws at you. No more, I was going to go to the gym but had to stay late at work and was too tired. I tried to stop smoking four times, but it's hard. I wanted to lose 10 pounds by now, but my schedule is so crazy. Fast food is all I have time for. Instead, I had to stay late at work, but I still managed to get in a half hour. Better than nothing. I got tired of not winning. Each week I smoked one less cigarette per day until I phased it out. I focused my attention on my workouts, and I feel better about me. I said I was going to lose 10 pounds by this date, so each day I made many goals that lead to my success. Once you let yourself slide even once, it's easy to slide any other time as well. Therefore, never let yourself slide in a promise to yourself. 
If you say you're going to get to the gym today, then even if you only go for 15 minutes, you did what you said you were going to do. You win. So how does this work? Oftentimes, the things that don't work out for us in a day are things that we had control over but failed to take control. Time management, loss of interest, too tired, etc. When you take control over the things that happen to and around you, you control the outcome. Here are some tips to help you succeed in mastering this mental training technique. 1. Set realistic goals. Don't say, I'm going to lose 10 pounds by Saturday. Instead, say, today, as part of my weight loss program, I won't drink any soda. And then, don't drink any soda. 2. Set challenging goals. Don't say, I'm going to go to the gym today, and then go to the gym but search the web for funny videos on your phone while lightly pedaling on level one of a recumbent bike. Instead, say, I'm going to jog in the treadmill for one mile on an incline of six without walking. Then, actually jog on the treadmill with an incline of six without walking. Even if you had to jog slowly but didn't walk, it counts as a win. 3. Set frequent or daily goals. Don't say, I'm going to challenge myself and then only give yourself a challenge once per week. Instead, say, I'm going to not drink soda today. I'm going to smoke two less cigarettes today than I usually do. And go to the gym after work for at least a half hour. Then, do it and set more goals for tomorrow, too. 4. Set meaningful goals. Don't say, I'm going to watch TV all day and be totally useless and unproductive. Instead, while you're cutting yourself another piece of birthday cake, say, No, I won't have another piece till tomorrow. Then put the knife down and hide the dang cake. Or better yet, accidentally throw it away so it's no longer a temptation. 5. Set specific goals. If your goal is to increase your running miles this week, don't say, I'm going to run more this week. Instead, say, I'm going to accumulate 15 miles by Sunday evening this week. Then, every day, accumulate miles so that by Sunday evening, you've run at least 15 miles. The technique is super simple. Not easy, but simple. You can apply this to anything you do or want. Just be true to yourself and make things happen for yourself. Never allow you to get in the way of your goals. Decide what you want. Improvise. Figure out what it will take to get it. Adapt. And then do it. Overcome. Applying this technique to OCR. So you may be asking, how does this apply to my OCR training? Great question. Glad you asked. What is the hardest part about working out? For most people, their answer is simply showing up or committing to a workout. There's test number one. Go to the gym or out for a run. Tell yourself you're going to go, then go. Don't ponder whether you should or should not. Just go. Let's say you choose to go for a trail run. Well, you just aced number one. Then, while you're out on that trail and you come to a familiar hill that has consistently made you walk in the past, look at this moment as test number two, to jog to the top without walking. Remember that the goal here is to be able to jog the entire hill. Therefore, jog slowly the whole time if you need to, regardless of how slow, all the way to the top. It's all right to slow down. You just can't walk. The goal in this made-up scenario is to jog to the top without walking, not run it in record time. Stick to the goal you set for yourself. Be realistic, challenging, and specific in your details. In the hill example, the challenge of getting up the hill without walking could be a physical one or perhaps it's purely a mental challenge. Oftentimes, we repeat our failure simply because we have trained ourselves to repeat that familiar scene, not because victory was out of our range. We quickly accept our weaknesses and assume that we can't do any better. So we give it a label or a legitimate excuse. I'm too old, too out of shape, been doing it for too long to quit now. In this particular scenario, you've taught yourself to walk, to quit. Remember, the key to this trick is to get used to winning your own personal competitions. So, alter the challenge so that you ultimately win. In this particular scenario, you do this by jogging slower so that you can make it to the top without walking. The rewards for dominating your personal tests are multifaceted. What you've gained here are A, 
training yourself to not quit. And B, a great workout that makes you a better athlete. Once you've won and have jogged all the way to the top, walk, recover, and be proud. Another challenge mastered. Now you just have to keep this new record. So, from this moment on, you can't ever walk that hill again. You now know that your body is physically and mentally capable of successfully jogging the entire hill. Now you have to keep your record of completing that hill without walking for as long as you can for, uh, let's say, the rest of your life. You got this. Continuing with this trail running scenario, let's say you come to your usual resting area. Ooh, here's opportunity for challenge number three. Instead of resting right away, though you really want to, do five burpees, then rest. It's a contest that you can come out victorious, and that's the whole point. Adding in the extra burpees isn't too hard and won't take too long. It's just enough of an addition to make it another challenge of the day toward your fitness goal and another win under your belt. There are three common reasons people neglect their workout. First, the failure to commit to the workout, as in actually going. But we fix that now, right? Answer, don't debate as to whether or not you should go. Just go. Second is that people say, I'll start going to the gym when I get in better shape. Wait, what? Here's the answer. Don't be so self-conscious about working out in front of others at the gym. They are there for the very same reason and are just as insecure about themselves as you may feel about yourself. Honestly, this usually keeps people from using the entire gym and then they stay in the cardio section only and miss out on all the benefits that go with the gym setting. It's not as judgmental there as you may think or movies make it out to be. The misconception of a gym is a bunch of meatheads working out in their cliques looking critically at the other members. There may be some of those gyms left, but I haven't seen any, and I've been personal training for over 30 years. Third is when they get to the gym. They usually don't know what to do once they've gotten there. Answer. Try as many things as possible and see which ones are the hardest for you physically. Those are the areas that you are the weakest at, so include them weekly. Try classes, machines, free weights, and cardio equipment. Everything. Each exercise will focus on a different muscle, so condition as many muscles as you can. I realized that my weak area was my grip strength, so I made myself, back to challenge number one, go bouldering at a local rock climbing gym once per week. While there, my hands and my forearms tired out quickly, and I physically felt done. So my challenge number two was, once I had reached that point, to dead hang from a bar for five sets of as long as possible. Knowing that on race day, I would be faced with that exact same feeling, except with a bunch of running on top of it. My challenge number three to myself was to go for a long run right after bouldering. Tough workout, but it paid off at my next race. Make your workouts as hard as you plan on racing. This sounds riddled with challenges for you to master, doesn't it? That way, come race day, it won't be excruciating. If you plan on going all out, you should do so at your workouts. If your goal is just to have fun on race day, then make your workouts hard enough to be uncomfortable, but not a near-death experience by any means. Your race will be difficult regardless of how hard you push yourself on the course. But you at least want to be prepared so that you enjoy the event without getting hurt. Let me reiterate. Your hard will depend on what you're doing. If it's a long run, then go long. If it's a series of short and fast runs, then make them just that. If it's high intensity interval training or HIIT, then make it hard. So don't take the hard to mean all out regardless of what you're doing. These tests you present to yourself start to become easier and you'll start to give yourself more challenging tests. It's remarkable how quickly the body gets used to something physically. The rule of thumb for fitness is about four weeks to get into shape and about two weeks to get out. However, when it comes to doing the same workout twice, you'll notice a difference in how your body responds to that particular workout by the second time you do it. You'll feel stronger, able to do more weight, 
or won't be as sore as the first time. The body is amazing in how quickly it adapts to a stressor like a workout. Therefore, when you're training for your OCR, keep that in mind. Don't avoid doing a super hard workout just because you were sore. It won't be that way the second time around, and your body needs constant upgrades and stimuli in order to keep it improving and making the changes you want to make. Applying this technique to everyday life. Apply this mental training to everything, not just exercising. Remember the old adage, you are what you eat? It is very true. If you're going to be an OCR god or goddess, you won't get there by eating Twinkies. Fuel yourself correctly, which means saying no to the bad stuff. Challenge opportunity here. Make a list of your bad habits, foods, decisions that will sabotage your ultimate goal. Include everything that you either know you shouldn't do or have, or you don't want to do or have. You've just created a long-term list of tests for yourself. The more self-regulated tests you give yourself and win, the better you'll get at proposing harder challenges for yourself. Win those too, and that builds confidence and self-awareness of what you're capable of. How many challenges can you give yourself in a row over days, weeks, months without breaking? Keep a running tally of yourself. After a while, you start to feel invincible and ready to take on any goal and will be more likely to succeed at them. This includes smoking. Get rid of it or decrease until eventually you can get rid of it. Weight loss. Take the steps or challenges to make this happen. Abusive relationships. Get rid of them. Exercising. Going regularly. Eating correctly. Frequent, small, healthy choices with portion control. Food addictions. Controlling them, not letting them control you. Mud runs. Getting good at them by getting good at all of the many elements within one, etc. A quick mental note for the serious competitor out to win. Don't lose sight of why you're doing this. You probably do it because, like me, the first time you did a mud run, you were completely and utterly hooked, did pretty well, and wanted to see how you'd place against other people. So, race because you still enjoy taking your body to new limits. Don't let the pressures to win and pleasing sponsors, friends, family, or anyone else take the joy from each training session and race. You started this for you. So continue to do this for you. Easier said than done, right? Now for the weekend warriors, even if you're not out to win, and honestly, it's more fun if you aren't, you should still train for obvious safety reasons. You're going to use muscles out there that you never thought you had. Be good to your body, work the crud out of it, and then pamper it because it deserves it. In summary, train yourself to be a winner by testing yourself on anything and everything so that you get used to winning your own competition against yourself. Then, when a challenge faces you, you'll know what you're capable of and you will face that challenge head on and do great. 1. Set realistic goals. 2. Set challenging goals. 3. Set frequent goals. 4. Set meaningful goals. 5. Set specific goals. Apply this mental training not only for your mud run fitness routine, but also to your everyday life. Make this a fun experience that you enjoy and look forward to.